I welcome you all to the CIT Quantum Hackathon work Workshop Series as a part of the Quizkit Polfest, sponsored by IBM Quantum and Quizkit. I take this privilege to welcome Mr. Balaji Sitaraman. Balaji is a senior software engineer working at Extreme Networks. He is an IBM certified quantum developer and Quizkit advocate. Balaji is an open source enthusiast and has contributed to several open source projects in quantum computing and data science. Balaji is always up for discussing computer systems and networking, data science, quantum computing, teaching methodologies, volunteer teaching. Congratulations on your achievement, sir. It was an inspirational journey. And we are now ready and waiting to hear about building and deploying a own QML model from you, sir. You can tell me. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Reshma and Kali. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, okay. Good afternoon, folks. Uh, my name is uh, Balaji Sitaraman. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer working at Extreme Networks. Uh, I'm going to uh, give a, a talk on the uh, the following topic, uh, which is uh, building and deploying your own uh, QML, uh, quantum machine learning model. So before starting my talk, uh, I want to uh, give a, a huge uh, shout out to the student team who is organizing this uh, event. So you guys have done a fantastic job. So keep up the good work. So uh, thank I, I thank you. So uh, I thank Professor uh, Manjula Ma'am for this uh, opportunity. So yeah, it's it's been an incredible opportunity for me. Uh, thank you, Ma'am. Um, it's uh, it's always nice and nice to talk with the students of Ma'am, like whom I have uh, heard great things about. Okay, uh, let's uh, get this started. Okay, so uh, we are. Uh, uh, having the below agenda for our uh, talk today. So first, uh, we will see about uh, classical computing and quantum computing, and like what is uh, why we are in the need of uh, quantum computing. So then we see about uh, ML 101, machine learning uh, 101. Then uh, we come to uh, quantum machine learning. So then uh, we will straightly jump into our uh, Core, uh, core part of the talk, which is like building and deploying your own uh, QML model. So uh, this talks uh, won't like cover much uh, in depth about uh, quantum machine learning. So uh, I think uh, you have some other sessions followed up uh, uh, for that. So uh, I think I, I did my best to cover like uh, everything uh, in a, a simple manner. So if you are like, uh, if you at any point in time, if you like hear any jargons or if you don't understand, like please feel free. Sorry, please feel free to interrupt me. Okay, so let's uh, get uh, jump into classical versus uh, quantum computing. So uh, sorry, uh, I had copied uh, from my old slides. This is just a bit lengthy, so I'll just summarize it. So. Like everything uh, we are uh, using or uh, experiencing uh, or like um, storing our data in everything, it is a classical computer, right? So why why we why, why do we need a quantum computer? So uh, does classical computing have any limitations? So that's where uh, that's why we are here today to find out. So, so uh, let's say uh, I am able to give a talk. You are uh, the talk is like. Uh, it is uh, stored in some. It is live streamed via some data centers to your uh, to your to your computer or your place. So uh, so uh, like all the all these computer systems are classical computers. So we have like we are using currently high high processor speed and we are uh, we are using that only. So but why do we need a quantum computer? So to answer that, let's say uh, I have let's say I have like. Uh, I am using an item speed processor or something. So, uh, and all of our mobile devices and uh, other uh, tech gadgets and uh, IoT devices, everything uh, it's like it's having a huge computing power today. So, all of this, uh, all of these devices generate data. So, these data uh, they are in huge volume. So, uh, we need like uh, we need. Uh, much huge uh, computing power uh, to process the data that is generating from a high high power uh, high power computing device so that's why we need like uh, we need somehow need a high computing uh, power machine 
but uh, the problem with here today is we can't like uh, uh, somehow the uh, if you uh, if you see in the VLSA industry somehow like uh, uh, we are uh, near the uh, we are near uh, we are very close to near the uh, saturation of the transistors and its speed so uh, for that we need some other uh, computing so there are a few options like uh, proposed by the team of experts uh, one, one of them is a quantum computing so um, what does classical computing does so it uses a binary number system right where information is stored in um, either uh, state 0 or 1 so when we have a, any problem like you guys had like your uh, digital communications or digital electronics paper so if we had like you have you would have some problem like uh, design an encoder design a like uh, multiple input uh, switching lines so max or dmax something like that so what you would you do uh, you would just like design a boolean logic and like build a build and design a circuit right so these circuits would have like uh, would have been powered by gates right so that is like uh, digital gates we have like nan nor or and and some type of gates right that will help implement the Boolean logic. So in low level uh, circuit design, these states are implemented as a transistor, which acts like uh, which acts like either on or off kind of situation. So like if we take uh, any laptop or a, a smartphone, today we have like billions and billions of transistors, which act as a switch that will somehow uh, perform a boolean logic just like your encoder or decoder or max something like that to perform the computation so these devices are programmed using either using rtl logic so also this uh, the the devices have like uh, fpga cpld and uh, so many things which are like ultimately the like main the core thing is like core and very basic thing is like uh, programming a boolean logic uh, only so like everything we have like uh, seems to be fine but we like what limitations we have is like um, classical computers can have only solve the problems uh, that are complexity class p so and uh, they can only uh, verify the uh, solve problem of np complexity class so uh, when we comes to moore's law which i have a diagram here so uh, moore's law is like something related in a semiconductor space like it's a like for every two years the number of transistor will get double but as you see uh, okay sorry if you see here we are like almost um, close to saturation so since i am from a uh, ec background so while i was studying so which was not uh, so many years back but uh, uh, like uh, we had like uh, transistors of device length uh, i think 20 or 10 nanometer so now we have like three nanometer so but uh, we can't like uh, so what is this means is like uh, when we have a, like a lower and lower length transistor we can like uh, we can increase the computing power so we have basically a, a chip uh, chip fabric where we can have more number of transistors can sit in if we like reduce the uh, transistor length so uh, so, but we can't like um, reduce the length to very extent. So uh, there is there are some uh, technological barriers would kick in, and like the device won't work like that. So uh, that is the limit to uh, classical computing. So now when you come to like AI or ML model training, uh, just uh, just uh, just like I said before, like we have like uh, high computational power uh, machines or like smart devices or gadgets we have. Though to process the uh, to process the data that is generated in a huge volume from these great computational power devices, uh, we can't we we should have a much computational uh, power than those devices. So that is practically um, we are it, it is not possible. So so we basically uh, look for some solutions to process like uh, data in a machine learning model. So. Uh, that's pretty much the limitations of uh, classical computing. So when we come to quantum computing, so we have uh, so uh, we have a uh, two. Uh, so first of all, quantum computing uh, 
works like in qubits, right? It, it doesn't use bits. Uh, okay. This is my screen. The board visible? Okay. I. It's visible, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So. Uh, uh, most of you are, uh, you would have heard, right? Qubits. So let me just uh, don't, I don't want to dive into much deep, but I will just discuss things in brief. So we have like a qubit, um, uh, instead of bits, we have, uh, in quantum computing, we have qubits. And so we have like, uh, uh, qubits zero and one, it is a single bit qubit. So if we, 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 we can have like uh, n number of qubits. But uh, the th thing is, uh, so if we represent zero, we would like have like one, we would represent in a vector space like one zero. And if we represent uh, one, uh, we will re represent it as like uh, zero, one. So uh, the, the uh, quantum computer works like, uh, it has like very two uh, main principle of like, quantum mechanics, which is like one is uh, superposition and another one is uh, entanglement. So before like uh, diving into the terms, let's just like understand like uh, the understand the what is the meaning of the uh, English meaning of these two terms. Superposition is like uh, it is like combining uh, uh, more and more states like having uh, it's like combining one or more states into and forming a new state or like uh, nullifying a state so that is a superposition right um, entanglement is like it is like uh, two things are like connected so uh, that is like entanglement so when it comes to a quantum computing space superposition means like if we have like uh, uh, we have a two two quantum vectors it can either uh, we can either add it up or we can either uh, nullify the effect by subtracting it so but the when we represent it like uh, when we uh, when we say a vector i would say like uh, it would in a in a single quantum computing uh, in a in a single bit we have list like alpha uh, uh, alpha of 0 qubit and beta of 1 right so as uh, so a bit of one right but we you should know we know right alpha squared and plus beta square should be like uh, it's equal to one so the uh, sum of squared of these possible uh, probabilities uh, which uh, zero qubit and one qubit occurring is should be one so uh, that is like a basic principle but when we come to a superposition right so the, the the main thing here is like a quantum system it, it can exist in uh, more, or more states simultaneously right so to understand it very um, very better in a layman terms let, let's say when we have a, uh, a when we toss a bias unbiased coin so either it can be in one of these two uh, two states right either it can be in head or tail but in a qu quantum world a coin can exist in both the states, right? It can, it can be, uh, it can have some probabilities of it and some probabilities of tail. So that's the very much beauty, uh, beauty, in, uh, beauty are like uh, important feature in a, in a quantum, uh, in a quantum space. So how that exists is like we are just talking about uh, possibilities and probabilities, right? So. Uh, I can say uh, I can say it is in 0.5 of uh, zero qubit and 1.5 of one qubit. So uh, that's how we represent it. So instead of having either head, which is I would consider head as a zero qubit, and instead of having either tail, I would consider one as a tail tail. So uh, instead of having zero or one uh, as simple, it can like coexist like uh, 0.5 probability of zero and 0.5 probability of one. So that is a superposition. Like uh, entanglement, as I said, like uh, where, uh, in a multi-particle, let's say when we go to a two qubit system, 
uh, when we have uh, when we go to a two qubit system uh, so uh, where like we cannot separate the information from uh, we cannot separate the information from uh, in a, in a state so let's say this is some state so uh, i cannot separate a q uh, i cannot separate a qubit so which is like uh, uh, which is somehow exists in 0 0 and 1 1 right so even if they are placed at the opposite ends of the end of the universe we can't like we cannot separate the information from it so that is uh, the principle of entanglement so when we look when we look at the advantages of quantum computer uh, or quantum computing so uh, as you as you saw right this one uh, sorry, uh, like when uh, two, when a single qubit is uh, when, I, when when we talk about a single qubit there are two states right zero and one so if we talk about like n qubits we have like two power n states so basically uh, n uh, n n n qubits can does the two power n computations in parallel so that is like a very uh, very huge advantage right so uh, so if we if we represent n qubits we will represent the states of those in a in a probability uh, probability amplitudes of each state in in such that we have like two power n uh, probability amplitudes so like uh, so we have uh, described qubit right so it can be like uh, zero uh, it can be alpha times zero plus beta times one so that the alpha square uh, modulus of alpha square and beta square is equal to one so it's like uh, tossing a coin which have like 50 percent of uh, uh, 50 percent probability uh, in heads and 50 percent probability in tails so so i have represented this as like um, schrodinger cat where like uh, it has a cat uh, uh, you, you should have like you, you would have heard the Schrodinger cat backstory but like uh, so I have represented like a cat uh, cat can be like uh, it can live in alpha times and it can be a summation of uh, beta times it can be dead so that's the uh, notion here so just say so like I have um, I have representatives like zero we have like one zero right and one uh, we have a, a vector of zero one so these are some of the uh, uh, in block sphere how how we represent the vectors uh, zero means it it would be like the cat uh, cat in north pole or like if it's a one uh, the cat would be in south pole something like that like if we have like a superposition state uh, then uh, we can like the cat the cat will coexist in some point here so uh, the same is applicable for the next one also so yeah like um, two qubit states right um, we have a, uh, if we have a zero zero uh, what will happen is uh, these two uh, these two vector will see superimpose uh, superimpose but mathematically speaking this like uh, we will have like uh, kind of a ten tensor flow operation uh, like where uh, we will uh, we will multiply each uh, we will take one vector as a static vector and we take another vector and multiply it like each element uh, will multiply it and put it in the uh, resultant vector. So we have like one into one, uh, one, so one into zero, and uh, zero into one, and zero into zero, something like that. So uh, these are like uh, two qubit combinations. So yeah, why we need gates? Like it is very clear um, from a classical computing point of view, right? Gate. Uh, let me go to whiteboard once. So gates. Um, so gates will get you uh, to achieve your desired state, right? Let's say all uh, in Qiskit, uh, like in Qiskit framework, like uh, by default, all devices are like all quantum circuits are like initialized in zero qubit, right? So let's say suppose you want to uh, go to 
some vector some state which is like uh, 0.7 uh, sorry uh, 0 0.0707 uh, of zeroth qubit so something like that or here like uh, if you want to go to 1 or if you want to go to minus 1 so uh, these are some of the requirements you may uh, when you design a computing system you would uh, you would very uh, easily get these requirements right so just like in classical computing uh, we have gates to like to manipulate the bits so here uh, in quantum computing also we have a quantum gates which does the exact same uh, manipulation so uh, we have like some of the gates uh, like uh, we have a x gate y gate we have a this these are gates are called like poly gates right um, x y z and we have like um, some uh, s gate t gate and uh, we have like some rotation gates right rx uh, ry and rz so these are some of the uh, single qubit gates these are some of the single qubit gates so when we uh, we have like also we have uh, uh, some of the gates uh, cx c uh, I mean, uh, cx gates and um, and other uh, other uh, other such gates we have so uh, why we need to like why we need to uh, have gates it's like very simple like it's like to achieve the desired state why i, I brought it up here is like uh, we will use that uh, in encoding in a QML uh, quantum machine learning. So let's uh, let's put a pin on this for now, and like we will revisit it uh, like when it when we discuss like QML model. So before uh, discussing about uh, QML, uh, let's talk about machine learning. So uh, what is uh, machine learning? So machine learning is like the there are some definitions, right? Exists. Uh, one is like it is the art and science of programming computers, so it can learn from data, right? And when we also uh, there is some uh, there is some definition is like uh, when we have a task uh, which has some uh, performance and uh, it has some experience. So uh, if we if we train if we train with data, the performance of the task uh, uh, should improve with the experience. So these are some of the standard textbook uh, definitions. So, but before going to uh, like machine learning, uh, let's like uh, one minute. Okay, uh, before going to machine learning, uh, let's just uh, focus on what a model is or something like that. So. Sorry, mm, we have a. Let's say uh, machine learning is nothing but like uh, normal uh, computing, right? Whenever we have a problem, uh, let's say we have a problem. Uh, okay. It's uh, when we have a problem, we will like we will first study the problem, right? Study uh, study the problem, like how it is uh, how it is occurring or something. So then we will like uh, find a solution, right? find a solution so then uh, we will just uh, implement directly right so in other say uh, in a, uh, in some case let, let's say i uh, uh, let's say uh, my uh, my problem is to to find the uh, equation of a straight line let's say my problem is finding the equation of a straight line right so uh, which is which is my problem what is the solution general the known solution is like uh, y is equal to uh, x right whatever like uh, x is my uh, independent variable and y is my dependent variable so whatever uh, whatever uh, values i have for my x you should also come in y that is my uh, that is the problem for the uh, straight line equation right so when we have a uh, uh, in a four quadrant or in a two dimensional model when i have uh, when i have like this uh, this is my ideal solution right y is equal to x so whichever value i will put it will come like it will intersect uh, the uh, quadrants 1 and 3 so th this is my ideal solution right so but in a machine learning uh, what what we will do let me take another color 
so what we will do like we will just trace the uh, trace this line that that will be our solution right based on the past data uh, we will just try to uh, trace this line so uh, that is basically uh, uh, our solution which will be uh, optimal at best so when we say a machine learning model this will be like the block diagram uh we will study uh, the problem then we will train uh so what we, we when we say we study a problem we'll just look at the data uh we we'll look at the uh, data and its uh, past data and its solution then we will like uh, train that uh, data with uh, in the, in a in a model which will just uh, find the pattern and when we have like uh, uh, when we have a, uh, when we have a new data it will just try to uh, put it uh, by uh, put it in in some in in some fashion such that like how it have done like for the past data so uh, we have output right so but uh, problem is when i say uh, my I, i have a straight line uh, my ideal solution is straight line uh, sorry let's say my uh, ideal solution is straight line okay so uh, what will happen is like i have a data what it does is like it's not like extract straight line uh, it is something like this so so uh, when i when my model is trying to predict uh, it will something uh, like this right uh, it will it will try to like uh, predict like this so this this data like uh, this data zone fit in right so depending upon uh, when my model is trying to do, do like this right we have to like tune it uh, such that we have like a good optimal solution like it would like uh, we have to come up like this uh, come up like so that it covers the maximum kind of thing so uh, we have to tune it like right? when we have a model like we have a input uh, input we have a model then we have output so we have to like uh, after we have a uh, uh, when the model is trained uh, after when we when we are going to test it with uh, like test our test data we have to like uh, uh, we have to keep our y estimate uh, very low right basically we have to keep our uh, uh, error very low so y, uh, y estimate is like uh, uh, the uh, original output minus predicted uh, sorry not y estimate sorry uh, the uh, error is uh, is uh, we have like uh, y minus y estimate right so uh, we have to like uh, make our uh, error uh, very minimal so how we will uh, evaluate the model performance is like with this error only right in in, in case of which like a, a regression system or something we, we will try to evaluate using the error uh, error but if, in case of like other classification system like we will just see like uh, we have some parameters like uh, confusion matrix and uh, and and others right so well, depending upon like uh, how the model is it is overfitting underfitting so we will just evaluate the performance so that's like uh, overview let's see what is like other uh, we have what are the other types of the <coughs> machine learning models um so we have a supervised right uh supervised uh, machine learning is like as the uh, as the term in uh, in place it is like this this machine learning we have like uh, we have it supervised right basically we are we are in charge of this machine learning so what it, it this machine learning have a label data so we will have like past data and uh, we will have some label to it let's say uh, i have a i have a uh data of like uh, email uh email data and i have a flag uh, spam flag this will be my data 
this would be my data right so uh, my email uh, my email uh, in a single sentence something like that and uh, i would have like whether it is a spam or not spam uh, i would have it as a flag so uh, this supervised machine learning what it will do it will just like uh, use of this on label data so that is the main key here uh, it won't like uh, deal with unlabeled data we'd have like uh, it will train the model with the uh, label data so that it knows like uh, i have like uh, okay if if it is occurs like this then it is a spam uh, so uh, because i know what is spam and what is not spam so how i know that uh, this is spam this is not spam that is uh, training of label data what my label data have is like uh, label data has like uh, input and output my input is input is my email and output is like spam right spam flag right so uh, training so this is this supervised machine learning model right so uh, so we have like two major types uh, regression and classification so uh, re regression is something like uh, we are predicting a numeric uh, value right so you would have like uh, in textbooks uh, you would have seen like ho house price predictions so that is like uh, ml101 example kind of thing for regression so in classification we have like uh, binary uh, binary class data and like also we have a multi class uh, kind of thing right um, multi class uh, classification we would have so uh, we would have like uh, these are like uh, some major uh, types but we would have like in uh, inside uh, sp supervised machine learning we'll have like li linear regression logistic regression and uh, support vector machine so uh, and so many things right um, so uh, when we come uh, okay we will discuss uh, what are the uh, counterparts in uh, in quantum machine learning when we uh, when we get there so uh, when we come to the next part which is like uh, unsupervised uh, learning uh, in this learning like we won't have like why it is unsupervised because it don't have a label data right i won't give uh, let's say uh, uh, we can take this same spam example uh, i have my email uh, i have my email and i have a spam uh, flag set so if i train if i train with uh, if i train this data with the unsupervised uh, machine learning uh, i won't like uh, it won't have like spam even if it has spam it won't like treat it like treat it like a, like a trained label so it won't take us like a, it won't take it as a label so that's what uh, the main thing here uh, unsupervised machine learning we will have like uh, basically we will find some patterns with a group of data so you would have like uh, let's say i have some let's let's stick to one dimensional kind of thing uh, okay it uh, let's say i have a uh, let's uh, i will take some color so so uh, in, in in unsupervised machine, machine learning right we will just have uh, different types of groups kind of thing so uh, i will just put it as okay mm. so uh, okay so we have like so uh, different types of groups uh, in unsupervised machine learning so what will happen is like uh, when a new uh, data point enters the uh, enters the uh, enters this cluster of groups uh, what where we have to place it right uh, we have to place it in such a way that uh, it should be like uh, the uh, the inter cluster uh, distance of the the data point in one group is like uh, is large and intra cluster distances uh, like it should be like very low as possible something like that so inter and intra cluster distance inter means like we know right it's like uh, outer out outer kind of thing so in, intra intra means 
uh, it is just within the uh, within the group kind of thing so we have internet and intranet right so your uh, mail would have like uh, if you uh, in your college if you have a set up a local uh, mail server it would be intranet uh, intranet right only uh, when you are in the network you can communicate uh but in internet you can like talk to any any computers any computers uh, right so that is uh, the inter and intra but uh, the main key here is like we should have like inter distance maximized uh, in, inter uh, uh, distance maximized and intra should be like uh, it should be very minimal uh so that is the key here uh inter should be minimized uh, uh it should be uh, inter should be large and extra should uh, intra should be minimized so that's why that's how we place the data point uh, anywhere in the cluster so that uh, so if a data point uh, so this data point stick to a particular group so uh, the data point won't be present in another group so we can like uh, we can see and find the uh, consumer patterns and something like that uh, in this group uh, from uh, from this analysis so we have like uh, we have a k means hier hierarchical uh, clustering and uh, this k k neighbor uh, k n n uh, uh, k n n clustering and uh, for visualizing and like uh, to like to say the variance of the uh, data we have like pca and those things right so that is like uh, semi sir unsupervised when we, when we come to semi supervised uh, what we would have is like uh, we have like um, some data would have like uh, labels and some won't so uh, that is the uh, kind of uh, nature of the uh, semi supervised uh, learning so we have the system have to uh, uh, see uh, it has to understand the labels uh of the label data for the unlabeled data it has to like uh, see which label to put in so that is the pretty much about uh, uh, semi supervised when we come to uh, reinforcement learning right um what we ha what we would have like uh, so basically uh, we have like uh, uh, in a in a uh, uh, when a user is in the environment if he like if he makes a uh, correct move uh, then the we should like uh, we should like uh, uh, reward him if he like doesn't like uh, do a, uh, if he does a wrong move we should penalize him so it's like a scoring kind of uh, scoring scheme kind of uh, system so when you see look at a uh, old uh, newborn babies they will like uh, newborn babies are like very good example of reinforcement learning like as soon as uh, they are in the environment right uh, in the new environment uh, from the day one like they will try to adjust to the environment so they if they like uh, let's say they fall on from uh, like a bed so they like somehow uh, they will learn like uh, in the future they will they will not do right so Uh, like uh, that is the like uh, environment for uh, reinforcement learning so these are the four major types we have in uh, in machine learning so uh, let me share this slide so uh, this slide uh, i have like uh, this data set so it is basically like uh, it is a uh, plan family so we where we have like uh, three uh, three members kind of thing so uh, it, it it would be a standard uh, data set in a, in a textbook so iris uh, and uh, iris set sosa iris uh, versicolor and iris virginica so these are all the uh, three types of class in the iris plan, plans data set so what what is the problem here is like depending upon the uh, uh, length Uh, with and uh, sepal length and uh, sepal width petal length and petal width we have to uh, classify uh, the uh, the particular uh, plant in some family so that's how uh, this is the uh, problem statement is designed so uh, let's say how we will like uh, uh, 
how we will like deploy a classical machine learning model to uh, in in a, in a cloud or like uh, in a production environment uh, we'll just see uh, like we have like two options uh, let's say one second <coughs> we have two options right one is like uh, we can like have a we can deploy our model so how uh, i'll just give a like brief uh, uh, functional uh, blocks for the deployment so what we have like we we have a data so we would have a data we will like uh, we will uh, we will if it is a, like a linear data we uh, then we will try to fit the model right a model fitting and we will do the training right model fitting and training then uh, the we would have a model uh, if we do a model fitting and training then we would have a model so model fitting and training it's like you can see like uh, you can think of it like like finding a right line equation let's say i given you this line uh, all you need to do is like to find the right line equation right so the uh, the oh sorry so data and uh, um, model fitting and model fit and train and next thing is uh, like model we have a model so that is uh, that is, these are the three type like three process like uh, in uh, in uh, deploying a um, uh, cml model right classical machine learning model but uh, there are lots of steps in between. Uh, some of it may be uh, we, we need to do the data pre-processing. So, uh, so some things need to be taken care of before we come to like a model. Those are some things uh, we can, we can like uh, talk about it later in offline. Okay. So now we have like uh, these things are taken care of. We would have a model. So what will like, what we will do uh, when we uh, when a new data comes in, right? Uh, let's say I have a new data. Uh, it, it will come in. Uh, if it comes in, then uh, I will try to fit the data in like in in case of a, like uh, classification model. I will just uh, try to fit it in a class uh, zero or class one. If it is a binary classification classification, I will try to put it in class zero or class one, right? So when my uh, test data, it can be like uh, it can be like single data, uh, single data point or multiple multiple data point. So as soon as it comes in, I just try. Uh, I will try to do the model. Uh, I will try to incorporate in the model, and then uh, based on my model results, I will just classify it in class zero, or class one. That's so uh, the same. The same approach is like. Uh, for the uh, quantum machine learning model also, but uh, we will get to that in a minute. Uh, so uh, the options, if you would see, like we have like, uh, we can either uh, uh, expose this output as a API uh, endpoints, which, which, which is very simple. So if you are doing for hackathon projects, you, you should really try this. It is like really uh, easy and flexible. So like, you, you don't need to spend uh, much of your time on designing a web app. Uh, so uh, also when you have like a real deployment, uh, uh, real deployment, uh, or if you, if you want to like build a good portfolio of projects, then you should try like a uh, web app uh, implementing. So no matter uh, which, uh, which way you choose, the steps are same. But uh, in, in case of web app, you need to take care uh, take care of something. Sorry, uh, take care of uh, something uh, else also. Like uh, if we say since we have a uh, Qiskit has like a Python SDK, we would have like uh, we will use either like uh, Flask or Django, right? So this, these are the two types of uh, uh, popular web server uh, in uh, in Python. So uh, these two frameworks, right? They will have like MVC architecture. 
so i don't need to uh, like uh, get into much deep into it since like uh, we are discussing quantum so if you have like any questions like you can always reach uh, reach out to me uh, this would have like model views controller kind of architecture so this would like uh, once you have your uh, hands on and uh, everything you practiced it it would be very easy to deploy also uh, just like as api endpoints so that's uh, that's all uh, when we come to uh, cml deployment let's say if like uh, yeah let's talk about the elephant in the room so which is uh, quantum machine learning right uh, so uh, the uh, whatever uh, we have like uh, the same process applies here, uh, here for also for the uh, quantum machine learning so what we will do generally uh, as we know like all qubits are initialized to zero in a, in a, in a qubit kit so we will what we will do we will uh, depending upon our uh, our uh, our data point we need to encode it right uh, we will use for encoding right we will use uh, for encoding right uh, sorry sure i can write here okay <coughs> so for uh, encoding right uh, for encoding we will just uh, do it with gates right we have like rx gate so, so you should have like uh, do uh, done it in like uh, in ibm quantum challenges so there you would have like uh, uh, they would have asked you to so sorry so uh, they would have asked you to uh, so is screen visible right okay okay it's visible okay uh so they would they would have uh, they would have asked you to uh, encode a particular uh, data point uh, to to a uh, using a gate right using a gate then uh, then uh, depending upon like uh, how uh, after encoding you need to like uh, build a quantum circuit right and we would have like uh, output so uh, we have like uh, different types of classification uh, uh, like uh, li libraries in qiskit uh, and in other packages also also we will like uh, we have like uh, for k means and other things we have like uh, uh, some some papers we we have for uh, well established for that uh, for calculating distance between the two points uh, so that is the uh, core in clustering algorithm right so uh, so we uh, after like uh, we have done the model then we have to tune it right so in machine learning we would like uh, you would have heard about the term like hyperparameters tuning something like that so we will just uh, it all all we do is like i have a like uh, i have a uh, i have a line like this this is my ideal solution let's say if my uh, practical uh, like uh, my model solution is like uh, something like this like i would just like tune it tune my uh, system to like uh, to reduce the error right so uh, that is uh, that's also uh, that the same approach is also followed here so then we would get our output right so uh, that's how it is so like if we like uh, we have like uh, uh, different types of like uh, qml model like um, what we would have is uh, um, this uh, some of these uh, th these uh, optimization algorithms so uh, optimization algorithms and uh, we, we we have also have unsupervised uh, machine learning algorithms and like we have a uh, we have also a neural network kind of uh, uh, implementation in qml also so uh, just like uh, in uh, classical machine learning neural network will come under uh, supervised machine learning so uh, we have different types of implementation so like uh, i have like uh, taken uh, one such uh, classification uh, uh, classification example 
uh, which is like a uh, nay based uh, example to model to like show is a simple demo so what you would know like uh, uh, i have loaded the iris data set so which is uh, which is uh, if you have a scale learn library then you can like imp uh, implement it uh, uh, you can load it so in uh, i have like uh, in iris uh, label uh, right i have like my data and target like basically uh, it's a label data right so i have my data and i have my uh, label so then uh, i need to like uh, train my model right uh, before for training like uh, i have to load the entire data and uh, the load uh, we have to uh, uh, split the size right so if uh, we need to like uh, need to keep 30% as a train uh, test uh, test testing data and 70% uh, as a training data we can like uh, keep it like that but uh, there is some uh, uh, some type of sampling test in uh, ml uh, we like it will do like uh, kind of uh, k uh, k me uh, i think k k test and training i think uh, that would like uh, it will take all the data uh, all the data and like uh, it will just keep switch between training and test so that all the data will be like it will be known to your model so that your model can like come up with uh, very good predictions so then uh, uh then the random state is nothing but like i have to like keep the data like very very random so that like if you have uh, like heard of like uh, random numbers so there we have a assign a seed right so th that is uh, same as this one so then we have a stratified sampling uh, stratified sampling is like it would uh, it would uh, it would do uh, data as random as possible so then uh, i need to so since i am going to pre process uh, it in a quantum so what it will i will do just i will basically uh, uh, i have to normalize it right so i have done my normalization and like uh, this is uh, there is one uh, library called uh, polydic qml that will like uh, i have uh, if i uh, uh, import it then i will i if i define the classifiers and uh, i have like uh, call the back end then it uh, then my model will be ready right so uh, my i have uh, trained it with my trained data so this is the, uh, this part is alone like this is my testing part it's a training part so when i come to like uh, testing it uh, testing or like uh, to predict a new new value i have to create a, create a, a api or api endpoint so that will have uh, that will take a, that have to take a request of the data i, I am going to uh, give us a input then uh, it has to predict uh, the model has to predict uh, uh, the model has to predict the which class it belongs and it has to return uh, Return the class of the uh, plant family, right? Since we are talking about uh, iris plant here, so let me show you a quick demo. Mm. So, uh, one second. If I didn't run the program. So. Uh, you have to run it like uh, this. I I will uh, just share all this with uh, ma'am so that uh, you don't need to uh, see this. Take a note. Take a note. It's like uh, sorry, it's my email. It's loading. I think. Okay. So let's start this if I have if I uh, given some data, uh, let's say point five, point two. So 
so it will just uh, after my training is uh, done it will just uh, return the class of the uh, class of the plant family that it will uh, belong to so we have a uh, three three class right uh, iris setosa versicolor and virginica so the, uh, this is like uh, easy uh, easy deployment so i want to keep things uh, simple so i have chosen this uh, api so if you if you want to have like uh, have a web app uh, like uh, with have multiple features then you can go for like uh, flask or django based implementation uh, so i think we are uh, right on time so if if you guys have any questions uh, please please feel free to reach uh, reach to me either sorry so either over link uh, linkedin or email uh, so if uh, you have any questions i will like i am more than happy to take them uh, let me just stop my screen because it's like uh, to stop okay okay hi have any questions okay so if you guys have any que questions right you can please uh, reach out to me in the offline so uh, i think we have now arrived to the end of the session okay okay, okay. Uh, thank you for your interesting presentations yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you all.